Dwarves are proud, and they have many reasons to be that way. They are proud of the holds they've built all over the world's edge mountains. They are proud of all the inventions that they've made to purge the world of orcs, gobos and skaven filth. And they are proud of hordes of treasures that their clans have in possession. But what would happen if you took those things away? What if a dwarf lost someone that they're close to? What would happen if the clan lost an entire stronghold? Failure and grudges lead them towards madness. And if a dwarf is mad enough, he might just decide to take on the oath of a slayer. You're one of those dwarves. You've decided to seek out a mighty doom, fighting the enemies of the Order. You're hoping that one day, after years and years of fighting, you'll clear your name with death by the hands of... Did you just run off from your team just to get grabbed by a packmaster? Really? That's not what a mighty death looks like, Dory. You have a long way ahead of yourself. Thankfully, you're in the right place. I'll set you on a path that will lead you to a saga that other slayers can only dream of. Let's get started. There's currently 19 carriers in Vermintide 2, and only 3 of them can bring a second melee weapon in the ranged slot. These being the Grail Knight, the Warrior Priest, and the Slayer. All of them are very powerful melee frontliners, but each of them specializes in something different. Grail Knight is the most flexible choice out of the three. He has access to a very useful ultimate, acting either as a get out of jail free card or a massive burst of damage to monsters every 30 seconds. He can also support his team, both passively through the Lady's Duty and actively by taking a shield and creating space for his ranged teammates, shield bashing everything out of existence. Warrior Priest, on the other hand, focuses much more on the role of a tank, but not only that. He's the only class in the game that can provide teammates with green health during a horde and straight up control Z any damage taken by them in the last 3 seconds if he's fast enough. And even if he's not fast enough, his ultimate makes one of his teammates invulnerable for a short period of time. Add amazing crowd control and 30% extra power against Chaos Warriors and Standard Bearers into the mix, and you have one damn strong frontliner in your hands. So, if Grail Knight is a mix of support and damage, and the Priest takes the role of a support to the next level, that would mean that Slayer... Slayer is an absolute powerhouse of a frontliner. He can dish out a ridiculous amount of damage and he can brush off most of the damage from hordes or elites at the same time. This means that a lone Slayer with the right build can deal with most threats that Vermintide throws at him. I say most, because there's one major weakness in his kit. Actually, that weakness applies to all of those classes. No ranged option. And yes, I know these things exist, we'll come back to them. Just ignore them for a second. Having two melee weapons available at the same time is both a blessing and a curse. Let's say that you're playing mercenary and you want to take a shield to stunlock berserkers or something, but you don't want to get rid of your executioner's sword. Well, guess what? With Grey Knight you can take both. This means that you have to rely on your teammates to deal with specials though. You can sort of bypass that if you have a bomb in your inventory, so you should definitely save them for those situations where a distant special is bothering you and your team. Yeet! <laughs> Nailed him! <laughs> but then again, they're one use only, and you don't always have access to them. If you were scared of assassins before, try playing one of those classes in pubs for an extended period of time. You're basically powerless when you see a distant blightstormer casting a spell, and hook rats are extra scary since it all comes down to that one input you make just before he attempts to grab you. It's so stressful. But, stripping yourself naked and going up against disablers like a real man or oh, Dwarf in this case, is the fastest way to learn how to deal with them. This skill also comes in handy when playing other characters, as you won't have to waste ammo on specials as often. It's a learning curve that every good player goes through. If you're not sure where to start, I highly recommend watching the 6 minute How to Dodge the Sabres in Vermintide video made by JTC. It'll teach you all about how to approach them without dying immediately, and how to train on your own. Yes, it will be frustrating at the beginning, but it's so damn worth it. Anyway, that's enough of me talking about other classes. 
Let's go over what makes Slayer such a powerful frontliner, starting with his passives and talents. Just like last time, we'll start with the base kit that Slayer gets from the moment you unlock it. His main passive, Trophy Hunter, is probably one of the best passives in the game. Every time you hit an enemy with any of your weapons, you get a stacking damage increase for 2 seconds. It works with the throwing axes, and hitting enemies with dual weapon heavy attacks or the dual axis push attack gives you 2 stacks at the same time. This roughly translates to a 30% damage increase constantly when you're fighting anything for longer than 3 seconds. It's amazing, and it doesn't require much brain function to use. But then hit Kazaki Doom, Kazaki Doom dies. Simple. His next two passives aren't as strong as Trophy Hunter, but they're still helpful. He also gets 7.5% more attack speed, and charged attacks can't be interrupted by taking damage. The latter is very applicable when you're using the Great Hammer, and that's where you're gonna notice it the most. But what about his ultimate, I hear you ask? Well, let me ask you this question. Have you ever wanted to fly? Come on, he didn't do the jump. Just use a gyrocopter, they are way safer. I think. Anyway, Leap fits perfectly into Slayer's loadout. Not only does it increase its attack speed by 30% while it's active, it's also an excellent gap closer when fighting ratlings and warp fire throwers. And no, it's not just because of the distance that it covers. There's a hidden mechanic that isn't listed in this box. Whenever Leap is active, you take no knockback from any source, letting you just walk towards those specials if you so wish. You'll still take massive damage, especially from Rattlings, so don't try to charge them head-on if you can avoid it. Leap also knocks enemies around you back when you hit the ground, so you can use it for crowd control when fighting hordes or reviving a teammate. It also ignores fall damage completely, so you can dive off cliffs if you need to. All of that on a 30 second cooldown. It's very good. Another very important thing about the leap is that you can activate the path attached to it without moving anywhere. You can do this by looking downwards the moment you press the F key. Also, try not to activate it when going upstairs or ramps of any kind. It's not gonna work. Alright, that's done. Let's get into the actual unlockable talents now. Level 5 is your obligatory temporary health talent. We'll pretend that the third option doesn't exist for the same reasons I've mentioned in my ranger guide. THP on cleave or THP on kill. Both have their uses in different builds. If you're going for a hold cleaving build, or one that tries to focus on being good all around, go for Doomseeker. If you're going for a build that melts elite enemies, go for Slayer's Fury. We'll go in depth when we get to the specific builds. Level 10 is very interesting and you're gonna adjust it depending on the weapon types that you'll carry in both of your slots. A thousand cuts increases your attack speed by 10% if you carry one-handed weapons in both of your slots. Dual wielded weapons and throwing axes count as one-handed. Skull Splitter, on the other hand, increases your overall power by 15% if both of your weapons are two-handed. This is very powerful, but very limiting at the same time. Lastly, if you want to pair one-handers and two-handers together, you can pick the 5% extra crit chance. The other two are obviously superior to this, but this is your only option if you want to, say, use the Great Axe and Dual Hammers at the same time. Avoid pairing weapons like that if you can, though. On level 15, we choose between Smiter and Mainstay. I'm skipping out on Enhanced Power, as Slayer is mostly a melee class with no shield anyway, so there's no real use for it outside of boosting your throwing axes slightly at the cost of making your melee worse. We're gonna be taking Smiter in most builds, as it helps us reach some important breakpoints such as one-shotting Storm Vermin in the head with the Hog Hammer. We're only gonna be using Mainstay in Great Hammer builds, as it will allow us to kill mixed hordes by spamming heavy attacks very quickly. All of the talents at level 20 are tied to Trophy Hunter in some way. Bonus movement speed when hitting enemies, one more stack of Trophy Hunter, or a cooldown reduction boost when we have 3 stacks of it. Once again, nothing too complicated, and once again, we'll come back to these later. And yes, I do have a use for the bonus movement speed. Level 25 focuses purely on survivability. 
Usually I go from left to right, but this time I'm gonna go in the opposite order, starting off with Bart. While I'm personally not a fan of this talent, it's not bad on tighter maps where you don't have enough space to dodge attacks when surrounded by the Horde, like in the tunnels of Hunger in the Dark. It has a use, but the other two choices are just so much better that I never take it. Grimnius Focus gives us a 40% damage reduction to all sorts of damage for 5 seconds after we hit something with a heavy attack. It's amazing on builds where we spam these constantly, like with the Great Hammer or the Dual Hammers, but it falls off on builds where we mostly use lights, as it requires more micro and leads to taking unnecessary damage when you take your target out faster otherwise. On those builds I tend to take Oblivious to Pain, which is probably the single hardest talent in the game to understand from the description alone. All you need to know is that elites and bosses do way less damage to you, but you still take no more damage from the horde. Okay, you guys need an example. Uh, what happens when a storm vermin hits you with an overhead? You die. And what happens when you have oblivious to pain? Ta-da! This really helps you focus on those bigger targets with much more confidence, but you need to be careful around hordes. Easily my favorite talent that Slayer has access to. Lastly, level 30. All of those talents upgrade your leap in some way. Crunch increases the stagger effect that you cause when landing, allowing you to stagger berserkers, and no escape gives you a speed boost when leap is active. Both of these are viable. The third option, on the other hand, is a complete meme. Dowie Drop serves no purpose, except for one. You can now one-shot Chaos Warriors in the head with the war pick. No crit necessary. Now, before you start freaking out, you need to understand that yes, that sounds amazing, but you need such precision to pull this off and so much space to charge up the full swing with the war pick that I'd rather pick one of the other two instead. Unless you're fucking Gotrek Gurnison and you can pull this shit off consistently, I don't recommend taking this with you as you sacrifice a lot of versatility. Actually, there's one other use for this talent. In case you wanna roleplay as a cannonball, this buff also applies to bombs that you throw during the leap. It also stacks with strength, but have fun! Anyway, that's all of the talents. It's time to talk about all of the weapons available to Slayer. One thing that I have to mention is that compared to other melee only classes, Slayer is the only one that has access to a ranged weapon of some sort, the throwing axes, which I'll start off with in a moment. At the same time, he's the only one out of the three that doesn't have access to a shield of any kind, meaning that you lose out on the save revise and crowd control that the shields provide on the other two carriers. If you're reliant on having a shield when playing a melee only class, now is the best time to drop it and become independent. And what better way to start than by taking the... These things are basically the worst version of Kerlian's javelins. I've gone over them shortly in the ranger video already, so I'll try not to stay on the subject for too long. They require you to position yourself correctly depending on the target you're fighting, but they can do decent damage to pretty much everything as long as you keep hitting the head with conservative shooter. You really want to use these in a build that uses a thousand cuts, since the axes count as a one-handed weapon since patch 4.6. Combining them with dual hammers is the best for a new slayer, although one-handed hammer and dual axes should work pretty well too if you know how to use them. And now for some tips slash fun facts about them. While you only get three of them on slayer compared to the usual five that ranger gets, you can still recall them to you by holding down R. This is slightly slower than picking them up manually if they're next to each other, but way more comfortable and convenient. You should still pick them up while you're recalling them if you can. Hitting enemies with the axes triggers Trophy Hunter, meaning that as long as you don't miss, you can do some serious damage to hordes, chaos warriors and bosses. While you can't melee attack with the axes like you can with elves' javelins, you can throw them way faster by spamming left quick. And final tip. Use another melee weapon once you're done learning the fundamentals of the class. I'm serious, these are mostly a crutch. These are probably the most versatile melee weapon that Baden has access to as a whole, maybe with the exception of the car cannon. I called them boring when talking about them on Ranger, which I still agree with by the way, but on Slayer it's a completely different story due to all the attack speed and damage that he gets. Slayer basically turns into a blender with these in both hands, and easily becomes the best melee trash cleaner in the game. They struggle a bit with elites though, so pairing them with either the dual axe or the one-handed axe is an amazing idea. Just like last time, I'm gonna go over the combos that all of those melee weapons have, 
Last time I said that you can just spam light attacks against hordes and do fine, and while that's mostly true regarding low density hordes, I couldn't have been more wrong when we consider fighting higher densities of enemies. Against thicker crowds used the first light attack followed up by two heavy attacks. Throw in some pushes in between those if you see that it's getting a bit too crowded around you. If you're forced into fighting elites, spam the first heavy attack and then block cancel. The two horizontal heavy attacks that happen after the first don't do nearly as much armor damage, so make sure to utilize it. Ah, the more attractive brother of the dual hammers. While the former pair of weapons are amazing against hordes, the dual axes are pretty much the opposite. They deal really well with elites of any kind and provide a lot of mobility to go with it. This means that combining these two <coughs> four weapons together is a very wise move, as they complement each other well. As you've probably noticed, you only have two stamina shields when having these weapons in hand. Remember not to hold these things out when reviving a teammate. Otherwise, unless you use your leap to create space, you're gonna get your guard broken very quickly, interrupting your revive and possibly taking unnecessary damage. I highly suggest taking stamina instead of the usual block cost reduction and using these, as you won't be using them to block to begin with. You're gonna be using the push attack a lot though. This one swipe absolutely makes the weapon for me and many other slayers. It does the exact same damage as a regular heavy attack, but comes out way faster unless you do a short dash in the direction that you're currently moving in. This makes it the best anti-special melee weapon in the game for me. There's nothing more satisfying than pushing an assassin away mid-air and cutting him in half with one clean swipe. The combos on this weapon are pretty simple. Use light attacks against singular horde units and use heavy attacks against armored units such as storm vermin, chaos warriors or storm fiends. One last thing about the push attack is that you can use it after every heavy attack for a quick 1-2 punch that does really good DPS and is usually enough to kill pack masses and leeches before they run or teleport away. This is the ultimate weapon for when you need to do everything at once. It's good at controlling the hull with its light attacks and capable of one-shotting some women in the face with heavy attacks, while still doing consistent damage against everything else. The two main disadvantages of this weapon that make it worse on the Ranger and NG are the low attack speed and the worst temporary health generation. None of these are a problem on Slayer. We get a lot of attack speed from everything, so that's almost automatically so. The other issue is that every other bard in Korea has access to a THP on Stagger Talent, which gives us a ridiculous amount of temp health with some weapons. Damage isn't really as important as survivability on the other two when it comes to melee weapons, as they have an amazing damage output on their ranged weapons anyway. Note that this isn't a problem for Ironbreaker, but he doesn't get a lot of attack speed, so it's way harder to use that. It's still one of his better choices, but I'll go over it in depth when I make a guide on him. If that ever happens. Anyway, the Cog Hammer is an excellent slot filler for when you're making a Skull Splitter build and don't know what to take as your second weapon. If in doubt, take the Cog Hammer. And don't forget to spin it! This is a threat. This is Slayer's ultimate control weapon. Its heavy attacks have amazing cleave and stagger, letting you kill pretty much everything smaller than a Chaos Warrior by just spamming them, and throwing a light attack here and there while your foes are stun locked. This weapon is extremely good across the board, but it's not really my cup of tea if I'm honest. I don't really have that much to say about it. The one thing that every player should know is that while in almost every other weapon you use lights for hordes and heavies for elites, the Great Hammer has these combos reversed. So lights for elites, heavies for hordes. Somebody please tell the journalists testing Darktide about it, cause watching them use the Great Hammer that way makes my head spin. This also applies to another two-handed weapon in Slayer's arsenal, which also happens to be my favorite by far. This weapon has the best monster damage you can get on Slayer. It also shreds every elite in the game extremely quickly, including Chaos Warriors. A couple of hits with this thing and full stacks of Trophy Hunter equals a dead stone women patrol in less than a minute. It struggles really badly against Hordes though. Sure, it kills most trash units with one heavy attack swing, but it has very low cleave and attack speed when compared to say the Cog Hammer. I really can't recommend using it against Hordes. Pair it with the Cockhammer or the Warpick for the best results and use it strictly for bigger foes. 
Speaking of which... Okay, okay. Stop the music. Stop everything for a second. So, uh, remember when I said that this weapon combined with the Dowie Drop is a complete meme? Uh, apparently I'm Gotrek Sun or something, because in the middle of editing I booted up the game to get some more footage and this happened. I don't even know how that happened. I slept on this weapon a few nights and everything just clicked. I even had a full two minute recording ready to put in place of this one where I complained that the war pick is out of class by the car camera in almost every way, but I just... I can't do that anymore. <laughs> this weapon is actually really good. Okay, that, I need to talk about the weapon itself. The war pick is a very versatile weapon that takes some getting used to. It has a charge mechanic similar to the rapier, where its heavy attacks have two stages. If you charge it for long enough, Baden is gonna do an animation that lets you know that you're gonna do full damage. You need a lot of space to pull this off, but once you do, the damage is massive. Now, on every other class this would be garbage, as the cog hammer has most of its breakpoints while also being way faster. But combined with Skull Splitter, Dowie Drop and Smiter, this weapon starts to show its true power, being able to one-shot most elites with one precise strike midair. On top of that, its cleave on light attacks is really good for killing the horde. As far as I know it's the exact same as the one that dual hammers have, but it's way slower and it doesn't have as good of an angle, meaning that it's harder to hit as many enemies with it. It's way better than I thought, and I'm gonna talk about it more in the build section at the end. Right. Two melee weapons left, let's finish this video already. This is the diet version of the Great Axe, and by that I mean you can pair it with the other one-handed weapons and a thousand cuts for a very fast armor piercing melee weapon. Heavy attacks for super armor, light attacks for everything else. This weapon's swipes also have a very nice headshot angle. It's just good at what it does, pair it with a hot clearing weapon like the Dura Hammers for maximum effect. While this is my favorite melee for Ranger and the Engineer, it falls short on Slayer for me. Not to say that it's bad, it's just the lack of THP on Stagger and the fact that other weapons are better at killing things. The main reason why you would take this weapon is the amount of stamina and amazing dodges that it has. 4.5 stamina shields is nothing to scoff at, but this is a defensive weapon on a character that focuses almost purely on offense. Still, if you really want a safe one-handed crowd control option with great dodges on Slayer, this is your best bet. Use heavy attacks for armored foes and spam the push attack into two light attacks for hordes. Or, if you're low on stamina, just use the two first lights. That's it for all the melee weapons. Let's end this video by listing a few builds that I have at my disposal. This time I have five of them ready, with one of them having two different variations depending on your preference. Each of them has a role, and each of them has been tried and tested. On all of these builds we're gonna be using Health, BCR and Barkskin on our Necklace, Proxy on our Charm, and Stamina Recovery, Crit Chance and Shrapnel on our Trinket. The chance breakpoints are gonna change depending on the weapons that we're using, but most of the time we're gonna be using Power vs Chaos and Attack Speed on these builds just to boost our attack power against tougher Chaos units. Let's go! This is the best build for clearing out trash that you can get on Slayer. Focus on protecting your ranged teammates from HOTs so that they can take care of tougher foes. Combining dual axes and dual hammers together means that we can take a thousand cuts to increase our attack speed. Since we're not gonna prioritize elites as much, we're taking Doomseeker on level 5 to get consistent region from HOTs. Mainstay is not really necessary here, so we're taking Smiter to help us out against tougher opponents for when we do actually have to fight them. 
Adrenaline Surge is gonna let us have our ultimate back much more often, so we can just spam it pretty much constantly during bigger fights. It also lets us regen our leap much faster when fighting singular enemies such as Chaos Warriors and Monsters for that sweet, sweet attack speed increase. We're gonna be using heavy attacks very often on both of our weapons, so Grimnius focus will be active almost all the time. Lastly, No Escape pairs very well with the push attack from Dual Axis, letting us catch opponents that would otherwise get away, like Sacrats or Leeches. It also helps us join our teammates faster if we stray too far from them, letting us overextend a bit more. This is one of the few builds that are gonna use Power vs Chaos and Skaven on the charm. This helps us one-shot Hookrats with a single push attack if we have full stack of Trophy Hunter active. It also helps us clear out Horde units a bit better. We take bonus stamina from our push attacks on the dual axis and attack speed to boost their general damage output. We also take block cost reduction on the hammers so that we can use them while reviving teammates in a pinch. I like taking crit chance on them so that swift slaying is active more often. Fun fact, if you activate swift slaying on one weapon it also works on the other as long as it's active. I highly recommend using this build if you're the only melee frontliner in the team, or if you're starting out as a slayer with no throwing axes equipped. Let your ranged teammates take care of elites and specials, and focus on the hordes so that they don't bother your teammates. This build has the best damage output that Slayer can have against monsters. It also shreds through elites of any kind, but kinda struggles against hordes at times. We combine the Great Axe and Cork Hammer so that we can take Skull Splitter with us. The Great Axe is our main damage option against single targets, while the Cork Hammer is our main anti horde weapon. You can also use it for fishing out singular storm vermin and bestigos from a horde with a heavy attack to the face. THP on kill is much more reliable when facing multiple elites at the same time, and combining it with Oblivious to Pain means that you can very often ignore damage that you take from storm vermin, maulers or even chaos warriors. You still need to be careful when fighting large amounts of them, dodging attacks and circling around them until everything is dead. Oblivious to Pain also helps us tank damage from bosses very well, so this build is a safe option when you're trying to learn how to deal damage to them wi uh, while they are facing you. High Tally on level 20 helps us boost our damage by 10% more, which is very helpful when fighting mass chaos elites and monsters. With all 4 stacks of Trophy Hunter we can kill Chaos Warriors and 8 light attack body shots while using the Great Axe, and we 3 shot Storm Vermin, letting us chew through patrols with relative ease. It also helps the Cockhammer clear Beastmen and Chaos Horde better. Lastly, Crunch lets us stagger Berserkers, opening them up and making them easy pickings. The Cockhammer is gonna be the weapon that we have out the most during Hordes. We're taking BCF on it for revives and blocking Horde attacks. Meanwhile, the Great Axe gets both crit chance and attack speed so that we can max out its damage output. Power vs Chaos and attack speed is the best combination you can have on the charm with this build, as it lets us kill the tough Chaos elites faster. It's best to use this build when you have another frontliner to work with on the team due to it being worse against Hordes. I'm always happy to see a mercenary, foot knight, zealot or a warrior priest whenever I equip it and queue into a quick play match. It's also my go-to for Chaos Wastes. This is the Great Hammer build. Oh, rather the two Great Hammer builds. One is made for dealing with elites and maxing out power, while the other is more suited for controlling hordes and versatility. Feel free to mix and match elements of these builds to your liking. The only talent that I wouldn't change is Crunch, as it lets you make space when charging up a heavy attack when fighting against Berserkers. Let's go over the specifics of each of them, starting with the power build. Both Doomseeker and Slayer's Fury are viable here. Doomseeker gives you very consistent THP regen when spamming heavy attacks, and Slayer's Fury gives you a big burst of health when killing elites. The Great Hammer is very good against Chaos Warriors, so that's something to consider. Skull Splitter is our main damage increase, and is the main reason why we're taking the Cog Hammer as our secondary. Thanks to our high power, we're gonna be able to stagger pretty much everything short of Berserkers and Chaos Warriors just by spamming heavies. Mainstay is gonna help us shred through mixed hearts way faster, so I highly recommend it. For level 20 you can take either High Tally or Adrenaline Surge, depending on if you'd rather do more damage or have your leap back faster. The latter helps recharge your ult a lot faster during monster fights. Grimnius Focus is amazing when fighting hearts, since it's gonna be active all the time. 
It falls short when fighting Chaos Warriors and bosses though, as fitting that heavy attack every 5 seconds is kinda risky. Consider taking Oblivious to Pain on the power build instead. The Cog Hammer in the first build is only there so that we get the power bonus from Skull Splitter and for blocking. Other than that, you're gonna be using the Great Hammer for pretty much everything. I personally take attack speed and BCR for it. We max out our damage output on the Great Hammer by taking attack speed and crit chance at the same time. We take attack speed and power versus chaos on our charm to help us deal with tough chaos and beastman units easier. And now for the speed build. Doomseeker is the better choice, as killing elites is not gonna be as much of a priority for us. We can't take Skull Splitter or a thousand cats, so our only choice is the extra crit chance. This isn't all that bad though, as we'll have Swift Slaying active more often. The choice between Smiter and Mainstay depends on our secondary weapon. The two weapons that pair the best with this build are the Dual and Throwing Axes. Both are gonna help us deal with specials and monsters, but one helps with mobility while the other gives us range. If you're going for Dual Axes, pick Smiter for better bush attack brain points. If you'd rather take the Throwing Axes, take Mainstay to boost your Great Hammer's damage output on heavy attacks. One of the main disadvantages of the Great Hammer is the slowdown that you get when charging up an attack. Fitting Impatience in our speed build lets us bypass that to some extent, making it easier to circle around hots and open terrain. It kinda sucks on tighter maps though, as you won't have enough space to use it fully. If you're not a fan of the bonus movement speed, Adrenaline Surge will help you have your ultimate up very often and it will help you region it during boss fights for more attack speed. Grim News Focus is the superior choice here. Oblivious to Pain doesn't help you with hordes at all, and you're gonna be spamming the heavy attacks constantly anyway. We don't really have anything to block with in the speed build, so getting a revise can be tricky at times. Consider taking BCR instead of crit chance on your Great Hammer if you're worried about it. Our charms properties are gonna depend on which weapon we take as our secondary. If you wanna use the dual axis, take the same charm as in the last build. If you'd rather use the Throwing Axis, take a charm that has Power vs Chaos and Skaven on it, and slap Power vs Monsters and Skaven on the weapon itself. It'll allow you to one-shot all special enemies in the head, as well as one-shot Globadius and Packmasters in the body, as long as you have 3 stacks of Trophy Hunter. Also, don't forget Conservative Shooter. You can take both of these builds into any team comp and do well. This is basically a mix of the Skaven Slayer and the Troll Slayer build. Very versatile all around, but not as impactful as the other two. Good for quick play matches where you don't know what teammates you're gonna get. High Tally helps you with single target damage that this build usually struggles with. Grim News Focus is a good talent to have since you're gonna be using a lot of heavies on both weapons. Crunch and No Escape are interchangeable depending on your preference. Take block cost reduction and attack speed on the hammers, and crit chance attack speed on the axe. Power vs chaos and attack speed from the charm will help you deal with tougher opponents and boost your DPS overall. Yeah, the throwing axes do a load of friendly fire. Why wouldn't I give this build an appropriate name? I know that a lot of people use dual axes combined with the throwing ones, but I honestly do not see the point. With such a combo you're gonna struggle extremely badly against hearts. If you want to make a build that revolves around these things, go for dual hammers instead. Doomseeker, A Thousand Cuts and Grimius Focus all pair very well with the dual hammers. Use them. Smiter doesn't work for the throwing axes and you're gonna be using them for most elites, so you might as well take mainstay to boost your hot damage. No Escape is actually pretty good on this build as it lets you avoid some attacks by backpedaling while you're recalling your throwing axes. Adrenaline Surge is really good for pretty much the same reason. Power vs Skaven and Chaos are very good to have on the charm. Taking these properties with Skaven and monsters on the axes allows you to one-shot every special with a headshot, and having full trophy hunter stacks lets you body shot pack masters and gas rats. One last tip for this build, watch out for friendly fire. Unless you want to ruin the fun for everybody and get kicked off course. Sorry for the lack of a fancy name, I just didn't have time to come up with anything. I really need to finish this video. Even though the war pick is in the name of this build, we're only gonna be using it as a secondary for one-shotting elites with our leap and clearing holds when swift slaying is active. 
Without the attack speed buffs, it's really hard to actually use it against anything. The Cog Hammer is gonna be our primary. This build is made so that we can use our leap to one-shot elites as often as we can with the use of Adrenaline Surge. We're obviously gonna be taking Skull Splitter and Dowie Drop with us so that it's even possible. Smiter helps a lot with breakpoints for both weapons. The choice between Doomseeker and Slayer's Fury is yours. I actually tend to go for Doomseeker myself, as it allows me to build up temporary health from Hall before I decide to go for a risky jump at a Chaos Warrior. Same applies to Oblivious to Pain and Grim News Focus. Pick whichever is more comfortable for you. I suggest starting out with Oblivious to Pain though. Here's the weapon properties, standard stuff. Nothing changes in the rest of our equipment either. Power vs chaos and attack speed, etc etc. I'd suggest practicing with this build a lot in Legend or Lower, and with bots before you start using it on Kata Quick Play. Once you're ready, it would be ideal to bring it in a team with one more frontliner that can support you during hordes. Oh, wow. Somebody's actually made it to the end. The video is basically over now. I'm just here to thank you for watching it all the way through and to make some excuses to the video not being perfect. Please excuse if my voice sounds tired, I'm recording this part very late at night after spending my whole day on editing this project. At this point I just want to finish it and go to bed. I apologize if some parts of the video feel rushed or unrefined, I just don't have the time to fix every little hiccup that I've made. I really want to release this video before the closed beta for Darktide hits, as on the off chance that I get the key for it, I'd be able to make a video with my first impressions. All of this Slayer footage weighs a ton on my hard drive, so I really need to get rid of it before the weekend. I can't believe that the Ranger video is 5 months old now. I feel like I've done way better than last time, but I wish I could redo some takes and edit some stuff differently. Still, I've learned a lot during the process of making this guide, and the next one is probably gonna be even better. Sorry for taking so long with this one, but Slay was the one bard in career that I had the least amount of experience with when people started asking me for this guide. Also, I've suffered from extreme burnout after finishing the ranger guide, and I just didn't want to touch my editing software or barden for the next two weeks. I'm still down to continue this series in the future, but it all depends on how well this video does, and if people are even gonna be interested in Vermintide after Darktide releases. If you want to help me out a bit, consider leaving a comment under this video. Tell me what you liked, tell me what you didn't like, ask me questions, anything. Also, tell me which career you'd like me to go through next. I'm expecting for the majority of the votes to go to the engineer, but I have a couple of tricks to share about both of them actually. That's all for now. I have an important exam in about... Uh, 10 to 15 minutes, so I really need to get going. Hope I helped you become a better player. Thanks for watching, I'll see ya later.